presenting a Steampunk Desperado 5 Minute Review, The Strange Affair of spring Jack by Mark Hodder, published in 2010, book one of the Burton and Swinburne series. Who was spring Jack? He was a terrifying figure, a man or perhaps a monster who roamed the back streets of Victorian London. Late at night, he would attack young women, grabbing, fondling, and sometimes mauling them. When his victim would cry out for help, he would escape, jumping over obstacles with superhuman strength and agility, which is why they called him spring -heeled. Two men were arrested for the Jack assaults. One was acquitted, one was convicted. The sightings continued, and in fact, they spread to places like Scotland. So Jack became an urban legend and an unsolved mystery, which is perfect fodder for steampunk authors. And this is one of them taking place in 19th century Britain. The main characters are two very different men who become investigators by accident as their lives cross the notorious Jack. As in many steampunk novels, they are real historical men whose lives become very different in this changed historical milieu. One is the famed explorer Sir Richard Francis Burton, a British Army officer who became a famous world explorer. One of his journeys was to find the headwaters of the Nile in Africa. The other is Algernon Charles Swinburne, the poet and playwright and well-renowned hedonist. Both are members of the notorious Cannibal Club, an actual historical men's club where these two were members. Men who were scholars who were particularly interested in anthropology could get together, let their hair down, have a few drinks, and discuss the controversial topics of the day without being censured. Now, this Victorian England of this book is very different than the real life one. In fact, it's not Victorian at all, it's Albertan. Because the queen was assassinated and Albert became king in her place. Now, that violates the rules of succession, but there was a little skullduggery involved. Anyway, in real life, there's a nutcase called Edward Oxford who took a pot shot at Victoria as she rode by in her carriage in 1840. Now, in this version of the world, he succeeds and she dies. So everything changes. Albert was so into technology, he loved engineering. In this world, he promotes bioengineering and Britain has all these crazy cool bioengineered animals such as dray horses the size of elephants that can carry more freight. Uh, greyhounds. Greyhounds can dash across the country back and forth as couriers. And parakeets who will repeat messages verbatim. Then they can find any address. They can fly and find the person who they're supposed to talk to. Fun thing is that for some weird reason, they always add an insult. <laughs> like you dirty blighter. <laughs> All the animals have these weird little quirks for that for that matter. Anyway, in this wild and wacky alternate Britain, these two men just happen to run across the path of Jack. Uh, Burton is coming home from the club one night, and he runs into Jack, does not capture him, but reports the incident, and the Prime Minister says, All right, Burton, you are in intelligence in India. The king wants you to investigate. And he says, well, yes, I guess I must, sir. So he does. And his good friend, uh, Swinburne, who is like 16 years younger, but he's a reckless young man and rather a hedonist, and he loves danger. And so he says, yes, I will help. And so the two investigate this case and find out that the real story behind Jack is far more bizarre than they ever would have imagined. So it's a very engaging story. Other things I like about it are the fact that the two main characters are both relatable yet deeply flawed, which makes it interesting. They are very different men, yet complementary somehow in their personalities. The politics and intrigue also are fascinating. There is a looming war that's happening sooner than it would have happened in our world. And there are five more volumes, of which I've read number two. Now, it can get pretty dark at times, so it's not for everybody, but I enjoyed it. And sometimes, though, I found it a little hard to wrap my head around what's really going on. A little hint, there is time travel involved. Nonetheless, it was fun. This book is highly recommended. This has been a Steampunk Desperado 5-Minute Review.